is the first for me. Ah, <laughs> ah. Definitely. First time in a blow up pool on a pasture on a Monday morning. <laughs> I tell you, I've done a lot of crazy things in my life, but waking up early to give an interview in a blow up pool, as you said, on a pasture mm -hmm. is definitely a first. Skydiving is one of those crazy things. Yeah, definitely. What was that for you? I think you mocked me on that one, but continue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. Yeah, it's true. You did, you did uh, go after it first, but um, it was always a lifetime, um, one of those bucket list items, yeah? Uh -huh. And as you may well know, you really can't put words to it. It's true. When you're 12,000 feet in the air and that um, instructor goes 3, 2, 1 and you're out the plane, the silence, the... Um, I mean, at first it's the adrenaline rush, obviously, mm -hmm. but then there's this like... Um, is this definite silence and then you start to this might seem cliche but you start to question the meaning of life Damn, but, yeah. Really <laughs> yeah yeah you can't you can't believe i'm doing this yeah, yeah. it's just this it's just this real eerie feeling of just silence and just being one with the world i don't know man but it's definitely one of those things i would recommend to anybody uh -huh. yeah definitely now my opening line wasn't none of them things right yeah yeah i was gonna ask you how's it feel being a limestone lemur, limestone <laughs> lemur. <laughs> to be honest to be up to up to this day right but it was, I tell you, you know, like it was about two weeks ago uh -huh. and it was driving and it just started like, burst out in laughter. I was like, somebody reduce your nationality <laughs> to a limestone <laughs> lemur, you know? <laughs> and the thing about it is that if you didn't get that, then i sorry for you, but that was the funniest thing honestly, I ever seen in was, a year. It was, it in was, a year. it was perfection. <laughs> it honestly was because like, I thought about it, I said, you know what? Kudos. Like, yeah. I can't even get vexed. <laughs> no, no, you can't, I, I, I replied, I said, I, I cannot even get vexed. Yeah. That was just brilliant. And as you think about Twitter, uh -huh. as you think about Twitter, like, it's just got pockets and moments of retardation. Yeah, it's true. Facts. Yeah, yeah. But then amongst that, you have <laughs> gems. Gems that last a very long but no, time. No, seriously though, that is, um, that will live it in for me. That will live it in for me. That comment there, limestone lemur, even if, I would even use that. Like, somebody asked me, what's your nationality? Yeah, I'm a limestone lemur. And they'd be like, what? Yo, you know my country, primarily made up of limestone. limestone. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, that made sense. Yeah. That made sense, yeah. Should there be a national anthem for the limestone lemurs? I think we got to adapt something from Madagascar. Uh -huh. Like King Julian. Yeah. <laughs> Physically fit. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. The fitness side of things for you, was that always you or did that like come on afterwards? No, always. I, I, you can ask anybody from us, um, from childhood. Mm -hmm. Always running around, always active. Um, in terms of making it a lifestyle, I would have to say a solid day I would put on that would probably be when I moved to Guyana back in 2008. Then it went to a tier when I moved back to Barbados in 2015 and got introduced to CrossFit and it just took off from there, man. And obviously, as you get older, um, priorities change. So it wasn't uh, after after a point like probably 2016, it didn't become about the aesthetic anymore. Mm -hmm. It became about the benefits to living a longer and healthier lifestyle, yeah? And obviously we know everybody talks about the elixirs of life, mm -hmm. um, portions and what's not, but the reality is that it's two things. Well, three, quality sleep, exercise, and a decent diet. Quality sleep, is that something that you still get? Because I know that you're now a father. <laughs> that you're now a father, first of all. You know? I appreciate that. Yeah, Thank yeah, you so yeah. much. You had your first Father's Day this year, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's it like being a father now, Gersten? What's that chapter of your life now? Again, much like it's skydiving, uh -huh. there are really no words you can put to it. Mm -hmm. um, I remember my father, I was probably a teenager, and you know, you're having um, silly conversation, a random conversation with your father. And I asked my father, Daddy, what kind of period you think I'll be? And he just laughed and he said, Justin, you're not going to know what kind of period you're going to be until you get children. Mm -hmm. And that statement rings true up to today. You're literally learning on the job. Um, I thought I had patience before I had the, the girls. Mm -hmm. They test all that. They throw everything out through the window. Mm -hmm. So basically, parenting for me has been so far just reevaluating. Um, learning over everything because from i read an interesting article the other day it was talking about um being a transitional character mm -hmm. basically what that meant was um is the character in a along a generation line that changes all the preconceived notions from before so for example that could be financial mm -hmm. that could be mental health <clears throat> that could be physical health so say for example you had um you had a family filled with obese people you the transitional character will be the person that comes along and says you know what we don't want this anymore we're going to have a fit and healthy generation going on so i i identify with that transitional character um notion because for me i don't want to carry on the um 
no, they're not necessarily bad things for uh -huh. my for my upbringing, but I just want my girls to be better. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what father has has been for me so far. Just being that transition character, and in, I mean they're only nine months at the end mm -hmm. there, but it starts every single day when you're parenting yeah and so for me it's just been a case of unlearning certain behaviors on my part finding out where triggers um occur in my personal self that so you don't impart them on that so it's a whole learning process man and i'm just enjoying the journey you know what i mean just um i have a, a beautiful partner that she um she's she's just fantastic and i tell people <clears throat> one child is is a lot but a twin you need a community and uh, i've just i've just been thankful for my community yeah and um it's a journey and I, that I'm enjoying this for nine months last week they were and I'm looking forward for what next eight years ah. yeah, with them. Yeah, yeah, man. so you gotta see how it goes man but it's been fantastic so far man thanks for asking you, you got a double dose a double shot I, I know I, your coffee man and <laughs> you see I I, yeah 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 I got you I got you I brought some there just I was like I don't know how long Joel got me out here so let me just walk with some coffee just in case yeah 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 man but um so far so good I can't complain you de don't let anybody fool you until you ask me about the sleep initially mm -hmm. Within the first, I want to say the month, rough, mm -hmm. rough. No, no, I don't think you understand me. <laughs> rough. So I was some person that was, and my friends made a lot of fun at me at first. I'm some person that was accustomed to like six, eight hours a night. Mm -hmm. That goes down to two, Ooh. three. I used to have to function mm -hmm. every day like that. Yeah? Um, but it gradually gets better though. It gradually, as they get older, they start um, sleeping a little longer, but you still sleep deprived though. So you, you, you just gotta, <laughs> you just gotta recalibrate uh -huh. again in your mind that you know what, I'm gonna get forward sleep and I gotta survive on that. I'm not saying it's healthy because remember what I said, um, the key to long life is quality sleep. Uh -huh. So you just, but you still have to recalibrate. You just gotta understand in your mind mm -hmm. that this is only for time. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, man. Um, but they've been sleeping better now. I, um, the other night they had a. 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, yeah, yeah. So that's been good, man. So I, I'm not going to complain, man. Uh -huh. I'm not going to complain. So I take my, I still, I still take my naps, mid morning naps and what's not. When they go down, we go down. And you got to work it like that, man. Roll with the punches. Yeah, fine enough. You say mid morning naps and thing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a kid's, but I used to take a mid morning nap. You have to, you have to. Listen, if you look at my, if you look at my bio on Twitter, that literally is in my bio. Wait, yeah. I'm a connoisseur of mid morning naps. I believe in them. <laughs> I believe in them. Like today, I got one schedule. Uh, I've been morning nap. Yeah, because that's, that's what's going to get me through the rest of the day. That's how you know you're an adult because you schedule the you mid morning have to, nap. <laughs> I just fall asleep. <laughs> man, I got, I got schedule it. Man. I got schedule it. I got a couple of meetings and stuff in DJ, so I'm like. Guys, I gotta block out this particular time, uh -huh. get my mid morning nap, and then I can function for the rest of the day, yeah? So that's how it goes. Yeah, that was take you now to the fact you have to schedule meetings and everything else. Justin, what, what, what is your career title? Because I tell myself, Justin deal with planes. That's all I know. That's it, yeah. That's it, that's all I know. <laughs> planes. I think that's, um, for majority of people, that's what I, um, they think also too. I mean, I would like to consider myself a, a man of mystery, you know what uh -huh. I mean? But that's not the case. I still have to go to work and, uh, you know what I mean, make a living. But my official title is aircraft maintenance engineer. Uh -huh. So that is just a really fancy title for the guy that keeps your aircraft on the ground delayed and you're probably cursing in the cabin uh -huh. while he tries to fix your pain. One man you delayed recently was a president. A very ah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't the president, by the way. That's oh. to be clear. It was his. Uh, it was the prince. Prince. Yeah, oh, the okay. Prince, uh -huh. His son. His son. His son. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. the prince of where? Um, the UAE. UAE. Yeah, yeah, yeah That yeah, plane yeah. was big, though. Just like seven eight seven, seven eight seven, seven eight seven. That was a. That was actually a remarkable experience. Uh -huh. um, I've worked on a lot of aircraft all over the world, but in terms of working on that particular aircraft, I mean, a, a plane is a plane is a plane. Uh -huh. But just in terms of course, some engineers came in from. Um, they had a. 15 hour flight all the way from UAE mm -hmm. to bring some engineers but the one the planes that he came in the plane that he came in on was on the ground from the previous day um just the general experience in terms of interacting with the Emiratis and the engineers and fantastic guys man and just the whole experience and how they do things what I will tell you though there's money and then there's money money uh -huh. and then there's our money. Uh -huh. It's a whole different experience, man. <laughs> <laughs> a, whole diff a whole different experience. But that was good. That was a really um that um that really that really showed me that um the guys down here in Barbados especially mm -hmm. they're so well um equipped. We um we don't there are only so many aircraft engineers in Barbados, yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, the experience working on that aircraft showed us that we we are um, punching above our weight. Uh -huh. Yeah, in terms of the experience and everything. One of the funny things when the plane land, um, the night before, I was the person there to receive it with the engineer from um, the Emirates. And he came out and we met a guy by the name of Ahmed. Mm -hmm. And he was like, uh, you guys see 787s here? And I, I look around like, 
Everybody was like, like, what party world do you think we are? Yeah, the fuck, we, we get 350s um, for that matter of fact. You know, we're working on everything down here. And he was so impressed that the, that the knowledge that we hear. But it was kind of, you know, if I, if I didn't take my mind away from just being a little condescending, I was like, you know what? They really think that we're probably some backyard area, but oh. it wasn't in that vein. Uh -huh. But it was just funny, so that, that we have highly qualified, like work class qualified engineers down here. Sad, sadly enough, though, I'm one of the probably one of the youngest ones, and so kind of my mission now is to try to get the average Joe, oh sorry, not the average Joe, try to get um, boys and girls uh -huh. aware that there's a career in aviation uh -huh. maintenance, especially uh, repairing aircraft, and let them know that there's um coming in the future there's going to be channels to get into that because a lot of um children especially in the secondary schools and stuff don't know that is a they, when they think about aviation they think it's only um the pilot the stewardess and just to a great extent probably the baggage you guys but they they don't realize that there's some person that actually fits the aircraft mm -hmm. and it's a it's a it's a really great career once you're a hard worker and um some person that loves planes you know what i mean and likes to um um, troubleshoot and problem solve. I would advise it for anyone, man. Well, there's definitely. a plug for, for, for airplane engineers right yeah, there. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely, but definitely. Take me on that journey for you. Was it always a passion of yours? Was was planes always an interest? Aviation always an interest, or was it a case of somebody said, "Hey, consider this," or you know, what was that path for you? Absolutely not. It was never our initial interest. Um, uh -huh. If you allow me like five minutes to give you the story. Hit me with it. Uh, <laughs> because no, yeah. the reason why, because I was scrolling through your Twitter. Yeah. And the tweet that stood out to me whereby you said that it just takes one person to believe in you. And then somebody commented under it and said, hey, you know what? This has also to do with a bit of your like, journey, your life story. So you can write a thesis. Yeah, I will. I will. You know? I will. So, I will. Yeah. so, so fun, but let me give you a little. Um, uh -huh. Before we get into that. Anything that I post on Twitter mm -hmm. in terms of that I say I'm going to do something, I do it for purpose mm -hmm. because I use that as accountability. Uh -huh. That I have to come back there and sit and take it off. Even if I don't post it, uh -huh. I know that I come back to the tweet and I'll be like, yeah, I did it. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I always do that. I always tell people, like, the same skydiving stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, back at the same skydiving, it didn't happen like two years after, mm -hmm. but I ticked it yeah. off. So <clears throat> part of that in terms of, I don't know where to start, in terms of what you're talking about, it takes one person believing it. That is very integral to... Um, that's very integral to my life actually mm -hmm. um, because that goes as far back as primary school mm -hmm. and then and then um, I never forget I had a teacher by the name of um, Miss Phillips and you know what typical youngster growing up in the 90s I was hard ears uh -huh. I mean really, really hard ears <laughs> um, I ain't caring about work or stuff like that I just running around you know doing what nine ten years old and I never forget Miss Phillips she took me under her wing mm -hmm. and she was a Justin your class three now, you're getting ready to do the common entrance. We got to buckle down and do work. Just didn't want to hear name of work, you know what I mean? Just want to play. Anyways, she, she, um, she persevered with me, man. We sat down, we did English, we did comprehension, we did mass, and I eventually got into common mirror. Mm -hmm. um, got into common mirror. That school. Got into common mirror. Um, the journey didn't stop there. I was still disgusting for the most part. Um, running around, you know, you're old now, so you're chasing girls now. Um, you know, Creep my way through first, second, and third form, and then it was into fourth form. I know that's the time we had started to do CSCs, and mm -hmm. there's a heavy emphasis placed on CSCs in terms of you know you got to get these in order to get do better in life and stuff like that. So and that was again in the early 2000s, 90s, mm -hmm. yeah. So it wasn't that this different thinking that we have nowadays. And I will never forget integral teachers like Michael Small and um, Mr. Mears and Mr. Best. Those, they were not one, but there were people that saw something in me mm -hmm. and took me on their wing to and said, Justin, you got to get your life together and start up. So again, I, I buckled down during that time too and um, I managed to come out, some of this, come, out, come out school with some CSCs and, and that worked out. But then going on to how my career um, really started, um, it's a very funny story. I always um, tell people, the old people are saying, it's better to be born lucky than rich, yeah? Uh -huh. And I have been the um, prime example of that. I've never had much, mm. but I've been lucky, yeah? So, um, I went BCC right after secondary school. I did electrical engineering there. Well, I didn't do electrical engineering there. I went, went in line. Uh, <laughs> I was supposed to be doing electrical engineering there. Anyways, um, that didn't work out. I was like, is electrical engineering ready for me? And then I was like, no, man. I always had an interest in cars, you know mm. what I mean? So, then um, I went on to Polytechnic. I did a four-year course there um, in a City and Gills. Yeah, I still got them back. Uh -huh. Did, did uh, pretty well. Um, got, so I have my city and girls in uh, mechanic, motor vehicle engineering, yeah? mm -hmm. and I remember one day after school, I was sitting out on the car at Polytechnic, and um, I asked, and my classmate, a guy by the name of Robin Phillips, keep mm -hmm. that name in mind, yeah. Mm -hmm. I asked him, um, Robin, what are we can really do with this um, motor vehicle engineering 
sitting gills. He said, well, we probably end up working at a garage or something, uh, you know, some, some motors uh, or or uh, McInerney or Toyota, so one of those things. I was like, do I really want to do that? Mm -hmm. Know me for the rest of my life. And knowing the app, because I had gone on a job attachment the previous summer before, and I, so I had worked in the environment at mm -hmm. McInerney. So I was like, do I really want to do this for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know what? My father, who is the the um, the, the the head guy at Air Canada, mm -hmm. he works on aircraft. And I was like, he works on aircraft. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you need? What kind of qualifications do you need? And Robin said, well, funny enough, I'm going to leave here. I call he was a Canadian citizen, yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna leave here at the end of the school, um, at the end of all this, and go to um, Canada and do aviation engineering at a school called Centennial College. And mm -hmm. that sparked my mind. I went home and I started to dig into what Centennial College. Mm -hmm. The fees were outrageous. Oh, it was something yeah, like eighty thousand Canadian. It was something like eighty thousand Canadian a year uh -huh. for a three-year course, yeah. Anyways, that didn't, that didn't deter me. I um I applied. Mm -hmm. I got in, mm -hmm. but. The money, money now. yeah, yeah, the money. Uh -huh. now. So I tried to find all ways to raise this money, went to like um, business space and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit here, got a little bit there, uh -huh. and that worked out. And then I, I, um, I went the student revolving loan. I put, around that time, I think it was only like fifteen thousand dollars giving you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the time ran out uh, for admissions. I didn't get the money, and I didn't, I didn't get in. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was a bummer. I will never forget the um, and I was like just like home. Boat. I'm not going to even tell you a lie, but six months just liming, you know, I'm just not doing anything because you know, you dejected from I'm not like getting stone lima. Yeah, I'm like, I like, you see, that would have been the Twitter moment day. <laughs> the perfect. So, I end up, I end up, um, just liming every day, just idle. Uh -huh. My father asking me, What are you doing with your life? You know, what I mean, I, I have no idea. Uh -huh. And my girlfriend at that point in time, too, she obviously knew everything that I was going through in mm -hmm. terms of all that, and she saw ad in the paper about a scholarship for uh, to do aviation maintenance mm -hmm. from Liat. This was, uh, I'm not going to tell you, like, this was like 2000 and, uh, I want to say 2007. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2007. And she said, just the man, apply for scholarship. You know, I'm not really in that space of thinking like that. Uh -huh. And I, I delayed it, I delayed it until one day she showed up at my house. She yeah, morning, be morning. Because part of, the, um, part of the scholarship was you had to write an essay about... Uh, why you want the scholarship? Mm -hmm. And she and she was like, um, "You're sending us a play for the thing, a play for the thing." And I, I ain't listening to she until one day she showed up, and she had the application form done, fill out, and everything. Jeez, she oh said, "What the thing? What the thing you, you got to do is just write the essay." Yes. Uh. And me begrudgingly, I sat down one night mm -hmm. and wrote a boss of an essay. Uh -huh. Because you know why you will never forget the essay? Because when I actually went to uh, work for Liat. The HR lady showed me the um the essay, oh. and I said, "If you remember, it, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I wrote this BS here." <laughs> I was, <laughs> anyways, that got me in, mm -hmm. and the scholarship was a five, four year scholarship in Guyana uh -huh. uh, to do aviation um maintenance, and uh, yeah, pretty much the rest is history. I I studied in Guyana for five years, did all my um and by the way, right, what people don't know is that um. Guyana, the school down there, the school called Art Williams and Harry Wayne Aeronautical Engineering yes. School is one of the premier aviation schools in the Caribbean, yeah? Mm. Well, sorry, in this hemisphere, uh -huh. because it's one of the only aviation schools that you get to work on live aircraft. Uh -huh. Like the Embry Riddles that's in Florida, the Centennials that in Canada, they're good, but they only work on like mock ups and stuff like that. So mm. when you're trained in Guyana, you're pretty much on the field already, yeah? Uh -huh. and, and those boys down there, they know what they're doing. Mm. Uh, when you get a job, actually, when you get a, when you finish studying down there, it's cool. Um, Companies like American Airlines and stuff like that look for those yeah. kind of engineers fresh out of Guyana. And then, so I left Guyana uh, in 2000 and, um, in 2011, moved to Antigua. I worked for Liat for nine years. I worked there for five years, came back to Barbados, and then resigned. Remember, I told you to keep a name in mind, Robin Phillips. Uh -huh. I then resigned from Liat here in Barbados in 2019. And uh, I was looking to get a change in terms of companies and what's not, because I felt like I had. Uh, reached my pinnacle at uh -huh. um, not to mention the politics and everything that mm -hmm. was going on with Liat and I was like you know what a job opening occurred with your Canada mm -hmm. remember Robin, Robin Phillips, Phillips. yeah he found his father. Uh -huh. so when I applied for the job and, uh -huh. uh, at, at um at um your Canada I didn't get it yeah I didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't get it I didn't get it I didn't they had another guy in front of me he got it but again when we tell you it's better to be born lucky than rich uh -huh. our opportunity came back around again the next year and I got in the job, and I'll never forget. I take a post of the picture on, on Instagram too. When he retired, I took a picture and said, "Look how life came full circle back around." Because he, he didn't know that his son had told me that his father uh -huh. was the manager of Air Canada, mm -hmm. and that there was a career opportunity. And it was that one conversation that sparked the entire thing. I want to say 13 years later uh -huh. that I ended up working for his father, and then um, COVID came along, mm -hmm. um, and Air Canada. 
they tried to hold on to the six engineers that used to work for him because his father would have gone through the door and retired and what's not mm -hmm. and there was six of us down here that was working for Air Canada but COVID came and as you remember flights and everything had stopped yeah. coming to the country so they were like you know it doesn't make sense holding on to the engineers and everything down there we're gonna send them home and they paid us out and I went long and I, I remember the day that we got um, let go from Air Canada I called uh, Malcolm who is now my business partner mm -hmm. I called him and said Malcolm hey you want to start up uh, aircraft engineering um, maintenance um, company and then he put on your phone in my ear <laughs> my phone in my phone in my ear. I was like what are you talking about because he called me back he's a really nice guy right uh -huh. he called me back like about the next day and he was like what are you talking about Justin because in his mind I only found out afterwards in his mind he was like I got a I got a mortgage mm -hmm. I just got released from a company that I was working for 25 years what is this guy talking about starting to... but then he was receptive and um we we sat down, we brainstormed it, and we were like, you know what, Let, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Our major, our major goal, we had no idea. Remember, we're engineers, we're not businessmen. Uh -huh. Our major goal was, you know what, we have four, five other friends that were released to. Let's get them back employed. And we had, no, Joel, I'll be very honest with you, we had no idea what we were doing. Mm -hmm. We didn't know how we were going to get them employed, but we just started. Mm -hmm. And uh, two years down the road, that was in 2021. Guess who was the first contract that we had going back into the business? Air Canada. Air Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's better to be born lucky than uh -huh. rich. So that's how the story. That's how the story got here. So everything always comes full circle back around. And I tell people up to this day, it's not a case. I tell people all the time, if your door opens, you all walk through it. Mm -hmm. You will figure out what to do when you get on the other yeah, side of the door. You will get the tools and everything, but don't question it while you're outside the door uh -huh. because that's where the opportunity is going to pass you by. And that's pretty much my career there in a nutshell. Yeah. And it's going pretty decent so far. The, um, the company is doing decent. Uh -huh. um, Aviation Technical Services of Barbados is what it's called. Uh -huh. ATSB. It's going decent so far, man. I can't complain. I can't complain uh, at I all. Appreciate yeah, I appreciate Congrats, that, man. man. Yeah, man. I appreciate that. Like I said, like, you see, because funny enough, Twitter is what <coughs> yeah. brought us together almost Correct. in terms of the gaffes and everything. And yeah, yeah. Like, you see somebody posting, but you, you never really have the full picture. I mean, you will never get the full, but you, you, you can never really understand, you know, what their journey was like. You know, yeah. like I said, like, I see you post the plane. So you... That nah, cool, yeah. I see you post a uh, picture with Perez, but you know, <laughs> uh, he's not doing so well, no, yeah. yeah? It's true, but I know you would have been very happy this weekend to see that crash oh, at the start of the GP. But did you not see my tweet? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say I was happy for the for the outcome of the um of the guy. I mean, uh, but I mean, it's my rival team, yeah, so I, I'm yeah. supposed to laugh. What would you say probably is one of the best nuggets somebody has ever given you in terms of advice? I've I've been surrounded by a lot of people over my time so far here in the surf that have given me nuggets um um i think it would have to be much like um what i just told you actually that's that's not that's definitely not mine um when a door opens mm -hmm. walk through it question everything else on the other side of the door that's the that's probably some of the best stuff because i use that almost in every, every time i talk to a young person or anything mm -hmm. i always tell them that so that has to be definitely up there i mean i've definitely gone to some more which i can't um remember right now mm. but that one definitely stands out in terms of some of the best advice Joel even in your life mm. when the door opened watch through it just watch through it they, they open for a reason uh -huh. they understand where you're coming from you're not going to have all the answers you're not going to have all the tools but once you get on the other side you realize you know what I'm learning and mm. don't don't. it's not a case I know, you know what you know what the second part is um, you're not going to know everything uh -huh. you're definitely not going to know everything and it's a it's a is a lifelong journey of acquiring knowledge so people tend to get bogged down in this whole thing of oh i can suffer from imposter syndrome and stuff like that no i mean yes there's a case to be made for that mm -hmm. but at the end there most of most of us are just piecing it together you mm -hmm. understand and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that you know but you have to stay genuine to be able to say i don't know mm -hmm. and then be willing to learn after that you understand where you're coming from even even in the business as it goes right now i tell malcolm i have no idea about accounts I don't know anything about wage pain, and yes, and all yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, I learned that on the way. Uh, but you know, I told them there are people there that can help you along the way. So I'm not. I'm never going to be one of those um, directors that are trying to micromanage or stuff like that. If once the payroll allows it that somebody else can be paid okay. to do the job for, mm -hmm. that, that I don't know about, you pay them. It's simple as that. I'm not going to be out here playing hero to save a penny mm -hmm. when to um, to allow a professional that can do the job for me uh, more efficiently than me. That's how that's how I believe things to be. So that's going back to PC. The best advice is to again walk through that door. You will figure out everything on the other side. And two, always be just be willing to learn, man. Mm -hmm. Always be willing to learn. Oh, Justin, as we wrap up this very lovely chat. By the way, thanks for joining me in the pool, right? <laughs> what, 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 what went through your mind when I tell you 
I can do an interview with you in a blow up pool. I mean, to be honest, um, it was, as I told you before the interview start, it, this is par for the course for Joel. <laughs> this is par for the course. I mean, there, was no, there was no second thought. I was like, you know what? I mean, he definitely has some kind of rationale or plan or something <laughs> behind it. So I just roll with it. I, I, as you can tell from, I guess, my feeds and stuff uh, like that, I'm open to and most then, of you. Yeah. I always say you, Chris is the man. He's the man for the pool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I didn't I did question it much. I was like, Joel, Joel, this is what he does. And he's a, again, uh, I'll be very honest with you. Twitter and Instagram is how we met and stuff like that. So you definitely get a feel. I mean, you may not, may not get the whole story. Mm -hmm. But you get a vibe from people. I I, I consider myself um, a good judge of character. You understand where I'm coming from. So um, if you're being real, I wouldn't have come out here with like just a random person. Uh -huh. I, I feel, feel good energy there, uh -huh. and I, I see the work you've been doing and the book you um, you wrote. I took a, a little um, read of it um, over the time that from the time you posted. Mm -hmm. This this young still got good energy. You understand where I'm coming from. I love the work he's doing. I love the fact, and he's genuine. Uh -huh. It's genuine in terms of like you can see from where his path started. I mean. I think it was the other day you posted a, a picture from back at QC or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And you can see that journey from for where he is now. So it's always been a path. So I I like I, I, I like that I like that energy, you know what I mean? And I could deal with that kind of energy, you know what I mean? So it felt kind of good to do this, you know what I mean? If you, I wouldn't have just come out here randomly with any other body, you know? You, in this day and age, there's like, um, there's always some agenda. Uh -huh. Doing this didn't feel like an agenda yeah. per se. It felt like, you know, natural jewels, they're doing good work. If it could be part of that, him doing good work, then let's roll with it. Let me say to all the cameras, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but to, to wrap up here, no, no. There's one video that I have saved and I just go back to. And I just laugh at it on a regular basis. All right, no, I can set the scene for you. Go ahead. You were in a colder country at this stage, I believe. Because either that or you were in Barbados, but you were in a jacket. And you were mentioning the fact that Whenever things get a little cold in Barbados and all bathing and snuggling, but it was still in my mind was cozy, cozy. cozy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people have not saved all the time. These sweaters has come out, so not to be all done, you know. You know, you know, cozy, cozy. <laughs> you know, again, much like you who revels in life and just enjoying <laughs> life and what's not. That was the whole moment. That uh -huh. was me driving to work, feeling myself in my jacket. You know, the skin was the skin was skinning. Yeah. The skin was skin out of feeling myself as already in the camera. And um yeah, that's where I came from. Totally random. It's like the cast video. Yes. You know what I'm like, yes. I'm driving and you're feeling the sound, you're feeling yourself um driving. Listen to me, right? I have so much videos of myself in care that I is it if I posted all of them, everybody would be like Jerry Stone. I suppose you didn't get locked up yet. But, you know what I mean? You didn't get locked up yet, but it's, it's amazing that um, I mean the amount of videos that I have just doing stupid in my car. Uh -huh. So, I'm, so I'm driving to work. I'm driving to work. Uh -huh. I'm driving to work, and outside, I really can't pretend that it's 26 degrees. Uh -huh. but it's very hot this Jeez, morning. Oh, you can see me sweating. Um, so I'm driving and got on my sweater. Uh -huh. I'm looking through the window. Skin is skinny. You know, you're feeling yourself. You're looking. It's smizing and what's uh -huh. not. Cozy, cozy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, there you have it, Justin. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting you. You know what? All the best in your business, all the best with your family, and keep on and on Twitter. Yeah? yeah, I appreciate that, man. It's been a pleasure, man, Joel, man. Really appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Good, man. That was a wrap, everybody. Thank you so much to my hardworking team. You guys are amazing every time.